Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome back to another Sims 4 speedboarding video or welcome to the channel if you're new here. So in today's video, I'm going to be building in the world of Windenburg, which is the world that we got from the expansion pack of Sims 4 Get Together and I'm going to be building a small little seaside coastal family home. So this house ends up having two bedrooms and one and a half bathrooms and it's built on surprisingly a 30 by 20 lot. I'm only saying surprisingly because honestly I would not believe that this lot is as big as that. If I was to look at this I'd probably estimate this to be like a a 20 by 15 lot or like a 20 by 20 is it just me i don't know i feel like looking at this before i've even done any landscaping it just looks like a really small lot but surprisingly this house is built on a 30 by 20 and it's built in the neighborhood in windenburg which is called i believe the crumbling isle now to be honest with you i rarely ever build here and i don't know what it is because this neighborhood in this in this world of windenburg is actually so beautiful like if you were to look at the surrounding neighborhood as i'm kind of like going around and i'm building the house you can see that first of all there's an absolutely massive body of water surrounding it the, the majority of the island is pretty much a beach loads of different rocks and like overgrown grass and all this really beautiful like shrubs and trees and just it's really pretty and i have no idea why i never really seem to build here but this week i was on pinterest which i feel like if you follow my channel or maybe watch my my videos regularly that is probably no surprise to you because i pretty much live on pinterest like that is probably my most used app in my whole entire phone and not even just on, on my phone i also go on pinterest on my computer i just absolutely love pinterest overall but i was on pinterest and i stumbled across this picture which happens to be i believe a watercolor painting now i was able to actually find the artist's name the artist's name if you're curious is called erin dirtner and basically it's this beautiful watercolour painting of this small little tiny white house with this really colourful landscaping around it and I just instantly fell in love and basically I tried to recreate it and plop it on into the game and this is how it turned out so yeah I, I hope you guys like it but anyway getting on from that and actually talking a little bit more about the build so you can see that I've pretty much built the whole main structure of the build. I've already come in and done the wallpapering, done a few different windows. Currently going around and just playing about with the back porch area, trying to figure out what kind of doors and windows that I wanted to use. I do end up using, you know, the, the sliding glass doors that we got from the Desert Luxe kit. I placed them into the, it actually ends up being like the dining room, but onto the back porch because I thought it was the perfect door to use in this world. Because if you were to live somewhere in this kind of environment, you would always have like your back door open because... I mean, you haven't got any neighbours, so you might as well, do you know what I mean? So I placed down them in the back porch. I then also placed down a door that we got from the Cats and Dogs expansion pack because originally I was thinking I could have a door going from one of the bedrooms leading out onto the back porch, but then I do decide to switch that around a little bit later on. But currently, as you can see, I am just starting to play around with these little roof pieces right at the front of the build. Now, if I repop the picture that I was looking at, like the painting back on the screen, you might be able to tell in the very like top portion of the roof piece is kind of like the the triangle a bit where the two pieces of roof meet you might be able to notice there's this really small little detail of i'm assuming it's meant to be like a a support beam or something not sure what it is i'm not sure if it's meant to be wooden or if it's like a metallic detail but it's really pretty and where i was basically trying to recreate this painting into the game I tried to recreate it. Well, I mean, not to be 100% accurate because in the actual painting, it looks like their roof detail is a little bit more curved and a little bit more fancy and can't really do that. Well, I say you can't really do that. You probably could do that if you have bags of time and lots of different individual pieces to place. It'll probably take you about a million and 10 years, but I decided not to do the actual curved portion, but, you know, take inspiration from that. And so, yeah, I basically tried to create these little support beams. Now, previously, I have actually done this kind of thing in some of my previous videos. I've done it in more, like, rustic kind of builds, you know, like in the world of Tortosa, or I think my fairly recent one that I did it in was a little rustic cabin in the woods in the world of Granite Falls. Now, the reason why I've done it in quite rustic styles is because previously, I've always used this little debug wooden plank from base game because, to my knowledge, up until recently, that was the only thing that I could really think of that would work for this kind of thing. But then when I was building this house, I originally pulled out this wooden plank and then something in my mind occurred to me, like, hang on, we've actually got this little shelving unit thing from a Desert Lux kit why not try giving that a go? Gave it a go and tell you what, it worked absolutely fine, which I am so happy about. Also, I say shelfing unit. It's not really so much a shelfing unit. It does look like a shelf, but it's not meant to be a shelf. So basically with the Desert Lux kit, we got a handful of different like 
things like bits and bobs like we've got a sofa we've got an armchair you know we've got a few windows and stuff but we also got some curtains we've got curtains that can fit onto every single wall height but then in between the curtains we actually got this little wall shelf decorational rod piece and that's what i'm talking about that's what i've used as the roof decoration it's meant to be basically like a, a curtain roll or curtain curtain roll <laughs> curtain rod but i i thought why not use it as the little spandle piece or like kind of like the little sport beam and it worked out perfectly you can of course if you don't have a desert lux kit use a shelving unit like a normal shelf in the game but the thing is the reason why i didn't use a normal shelf because i did originally pull one out is it's not as thick and i feel like you won't notice it as much also i feel like the shelving unit rod piece whatever we're classing it as from the desert lux kit also comes in more swatches which i also appreciate because this kind of opens up a whole can of worms in terms of the possibilities that you can use this in because say for example you're building like a modern farmhouse and you're wanting to have black support themes kind of like running through all the different roof pieces Previously, I would have just maybe used a shelf or maybe try and make the debug wooden plank work. But with this little shelf from, oh, I say, I keep on calling it a shelf, but I hope you know that I'm talking about the actual rod piece. But with this little kind of unit thing, this wall decoration from the Desert Lights kit, it comes in a few different swatches of brown. It comes in grey, it comes in white. I think there's also a few other odd swatches here and there. But there is so many different more possibilities that you can use it like with in terms of the colour swatches. I don't know, I'm just really happy with it. And so, yeah, I thought I'd mention it as kind of like a little a little tip if you ever want to do support beams in your Sims houses. But the way that you actually do it, because I just realised I didn't actually tell you how you actually do it, is you basically just place down the individual wall decoration into the wall piece and then using the tool mod, you rotate a piece by 90 degrees to kind of get it so it goes from, I'm doing our movements, you can't see me. If you rotate it 90 degrees, then obviously it goes through a different way and you can see it. But then you also get another two pieces, you rotate them at 45 degrees in the different directions. And then, yeah, there's kind of like these perfect little triangles plop them on into the roof and you're good. I also did decide to do it for the other areas of the roof, but I don't show that on camera or like in the in the video just because it would have taken up too much time and it was basically the exact same method. Just elevate these pieces up, rotate them, rotate them, plop them in and then it was just a little bit too repetitive. But yeah, I do place them pretty much in all the different roof pieces in this house. But currently you can see that I'm just going around and basically trying to fill out this little front entrance porch area. So you've already seen that I've done pretty much the majority of the front garden landscaping. I'm not gonna lie to you, I did I did struggle with the landscaping a little bit in, the, in this build. Maybe it's because I don't regularly build in this area of Windenburg and so I'm not too familiar with all the different landscaping items and you know, all the different like wild flowers and all the different wild bushes and trees and I'm not too familiar with it. And so when it came around to landscaping, I was a little bit stuck because Part of me wanting to try and recreate the watercolour painting that I was looking at because it's quite colourful and it's very bright and it's very beautiful. But then the second part of me is like, yeah, but actually look around the environment that we're in. There is cliffs and lots of water and lots of like dry grass. Realistically, is there going to be a bright orange bunch of flowers in the corner? Probably not. And so I did actually struggle quite a bit trying to figure out how to landscape this build, how to make it blend in with the I like the environment around it. It ended up coming together in the end, but yeah, I'm not gonna lie, it was quite a process, but you would have seen at the front of the build, I actually placed down a little tiny bow. Now the bow itself is from the live edit menu and it's from the My Wedding Stories game pack. Now this is the boat that you can find in the world of Tortosa, kind of in the ocean area. And I basically place it down as a purely decorative thing. We do have boats in the game, which your Sims can technically like get on and they can ride around on, but it's, ones that we got from the island of an expansion pack it's not the one that i use the one that i use i was just thinking was maybe kind of like an old fisherman's boat maybe the family that live in this house maybe their relatives used to be fishermen and so they used to go out fishing every single day and maybe it was something that was left at the front of the property and then as the house has been like passed down for all the different households maybe it's just stayed there and then over time you know bits of grass started growing around it maybe like a bit of mold started growing on the edges and stuff i did also place down some boxes into the actual boat. I was thinking that maybe it is like old fisherman equipment or maybe this family just uses the boat as like their, their little storage place for all their bits and bobs. But you can see on the upper porch areas, I placed down a little rocking chair right at the front. Now, I don't know if you would have noticed, but I placed down these wall decorations that I think the one that I've used is from the Vampires game pack. Basically, I place it down in the area that I imagine that if your Sims were to be rocking on that chair, consistently for like years they probably start to like scrape the wall behind it and so i place down these little tiny almost like little bumps within the wall to try and make it look like where the rocking chair has been 
it's just been you know bashing the wall behind it and kind of like dented the wall a little bit but then it also plays down like a little chest table also some little planters currently you can see that i'm just going around and doing the back garden area so in the back garden there ends up being a little tiny hanging washing line whatever you want to class it as I did place it underneath a tree. Now, unfortunately, when it came around to playtesting, for some reason, my sims were pretending like there was no washing line on the lot, which I don't know if it was a problem with me. Like, I don't know if it was a me problem or a game problem because sometimes my sims will act like there's no washing machine on the lot and there'll literally just be a washing machine standing right in front of them. So I don't know if it was a, an, an issue where I placed it if your sims couldn't gain access to it or if it was just like a bug in the game where your sims pretends that there's not this one particular object even though it's there. But I basically placed down this little washing line underneath the tree but when I was playtesting, it just, my sims were acting like it wasn't even there. And so I did decide to move it off camera and place it down basically directly next to it. And so in gameplay, if you ever want to get your sims to, you know, hang out there washing in the sunshine to let it dry, there wouldn't be any issues because originally it was placed underneath a tree, had all these different rocks around it and grass around it. And previously, when I've done this before in previous builds, it's never really seemed to be an issue. But for some reason today, when I was playtesting, the game did not like it. And so I did decide to move the washing line. But as well as the washing line, I also placed down a little baby, baby, <laughs> little baby. I didn't place down a baby. Object babies are very much still in their cribs. A little bunny rabbit hole. I have absolutely no idea why I said baby. I mean, Maybe it's because the Growing Together trailer, which if you're not aware, is the next upcoming expansion pack of The Sims 4. The Sims 4 Growing Together, it's basically a Sims 4 Generations, I'm really excited. But it's it's on my mind, I pretty much watch the trailer every single day and so maybe that's the reason why I said baby, but either way, there is a rabbit bunny hole. I had to say rabbit before I said bunny just then because I knew that my brain would try and say baby again. But there is a rabbit hole in the back garden, which means in gameplay, if you decide to download this build of the gallery, you'll notice there'll be all these different rabbits just bouncing around, coming out of the landscaping. It's just, it's really cute. And then it may be if your sims live in this house, they can have their their rabbit mate in the back garden they can like be friends with a rabbit or something but as well as that i also placed down the tree stump which is from the cottage of an expansion pack and it's basically a tree stump that birds can fly out of but you might have noticed i didn't place it down to be visible i sized it down and then tried to merge it into a tree which i know probably looks pointless because i've then basically just completely disguised the object but it, there is a little bit of method to the madness Basically, sometimes I like having the look of having all these different birds flying from the surrounding neighbourhood going into your sims back garden if you do place it down. But the thing is, I find that sometimes the actual tree stump that the birds fly out of doesn't always fit in with the landscaping. Like, say for example, if I want birds coming out of the landscaping that I do in a house in Oasis Springs, and then I place down that tree stump, it just it doesn't seem like it meshes well, do you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't seem like it would fit in with the environment. And so sometimes if I want birds to come out of the landscaping, but I don't really want to feel like I want to use that particular object, I'll use it, but I'll size it down and basically disguise it because in that way, the birds will still like be on the lot. The birds will still fly into the bushes. They will still fly into the trees, but you just can't see the object. The one slight downside to it though, with doing this method when you size it down is unfortunately where you size it down and you try and merge it into another object, your sims won't be able to like click on it and then talk to the birds and you know like try and give presents to the birds which if you have never played with the cottage living expansion pack you're probably thinking what are you talking about like, what are you actually on your sims can become friends with birds and also become friends with rabbits and stuff in the game i'm not i'm not losing it your sims can actually become like best mates with all the different animals but your sims can't interact with the object or well, at least i've never actually tried maybe i should try that one day but I size it down to a point where I feel like your sims won't even be able to know it's there. But if you wanted to and you did want your sims to be able to be a massive animal lover and you still wanted your sims to have all these different bird friends, you know, have all of these different relationships with the animals, you can still add in another one onto the lot. But just for the, for the build itself, I didn't particularly like the look of the tree stump in this in this environment and so yeah i just decided to merge it into another tree but then also quickly in the back garden as well i placed down a little art easel which is kind of like a little a little nod into the inside which i've now moved on into but i placed on a little art easel i found a little debug paintbrush and i put that on kind of like the fencing piece on the upper porch as well as like a little mug i was thinking that one of the sims that lives in this house is really into art really into like little arts and crafts making things just doing anything creative and so the reason why I said it kind of like relates to the inside is because in the inside, I forgot to even mention it up to this point, but you know I said there's two bedrooms and one and a half bathrooms. There is technically a third bedroom if you decide that you don't want a little craft room because I decided to make one room into the biggest like 
hobby room for arts and crafts and crocheting and knitting and you know just all the very creative things that your sims can do in the game is pretty much into that room but as you can see i'm currently just going around and actually just finishing up the kitchen space now to be honest this could have easily just been like a little dining room this could have been like one of the bedrooms or something just because it is one of the smaller rooms in the house but i really wanted this to be the kitchen because i use this really big window which is from the laundry day stuff pack i sized it down ever so slightly just because originally this window is meant to fit a medium wall height and i wanted to build this house using the shortest wall height so i did size it down ever so slightly but i wanted this room to be the kitchen because the views that this room have is just absolutely beautiful like it literally just looks out onto the water and like the beach in front of it and there's also like a little dock area it's just so beautiful and so i decided to make it into the kitchen of course if you wanted to have a slightly bigger kitchen you could definitely rework the floor plan you know switch all the different rooms around but just for the screenshots i just thought it'd be so beautiful to have like a kitchen overlooking the ocean but before i did the kitchen you might have noticed i did just do the little entrance hallway into the build i feel like nowadays i always start with the entrance hallway because it's just, it's the easiest place to start when you come in to furnish a house, I find anyway. But normally my entrance hallways are very, very like similar. There's always like a side table, maybe sometimes I'll pop a mirror in there. It's oftentimes like a little seating area, which I imagine in my head for your sims to be able to sit down and put their shoes on. Because I don't have that in, in my house, I don't have that. I just sit on the stairs if I want to put my shoes on. And so in my sims houses, I always try and make it so there's kind of like a little seating area for your sims to put like their weddies on or something. I also place down a little handbag which you've got from the cottage living at debug menu and i was thinking the sim that lives in this house that's their handbag and they've just like left it on the little the little side maybe they're gonna pop to the shops in a bit or something but as well as that you would have quickly just seen me do one of the bathrooms now the bathroom that you just saw me do was the half bath so it's only got a toilet and a sink in there is no shower there is no bathtub it's purely just if your sims are downstairs and they need to go to the toilet they don't have to go all the way upstairs to go to the toilet so in there i tried to make it a little bit like a a seaside coastal theme so i placed down some wall prints that we got from the island living at debug menu if you get your sims to go i think it's if they go free diving or it might be scuba diving but i feel like it's free diving i did actually play with the island living expansion pack literally last night and so my sim was able to find treasure and i think they can also take pictures of stuff but they need to get a underwater camera either way they're from island living they're in the debug menu but i tried to make that little half bathroom into kind of like a a beachy theme i feel like i never do bathrooms with the beachy theme and i feel like so many people in england have beach themes bathrooms i i personally don't have a beach themed bathroom but I know so many people and I've been around so many people's houses that have beach themes. It's just like a stereotypical Britain thing. And so in the bathroom, I placed down them wall prints that I was talking about. It looks like they've been taken underwater. But then I also placed down a little shell that we've got from the island living. Again, from the debug menu. And then I think also just some stereotypical kind of like bathroom items. A soap dispenser. There is also like a, a plunger in there. Just loads of different bits and pieces. Also merged in a tissue box on top of the back of the toilet. I was thinking that maybe they're wipes or something but now as you can see i've now moved on and i started furnishing the lounge room so this room i did really struggle with mainly for the fact of it was such a big room originally i did make it a tiny little bit smaller you would have seen i kept the footage in for that but the actual shape of the room was quite it's quite big and it was quite obscure at the start because basically instead of just being like a rectangle or a bit like a square originally it was basically a bit of a square with a bump out but it was it was a weirdly shaped bump out and i was really struggling on how to actually structure the furniture so it would make sense because i was trying to figure out okay where does the fireplace go where does the sofas go i didn't want half the sofas like the backing of it to be on the wall and the other half bit not to be on the wall and so i did struggle with it eventually just made the room a little bit smaller and i feel like that helped me so much but in here i decided to use the sofa which is from the paranormal stuff pack that's a three seater one the two seater one is from the tiny living stuff pack and and then the armchair is from the cottage living expansion pack the reason why i use so many different sofas and armchairs and just basically seating areas from all these different packs i really wanted to use the paranormal stuff sofa the big one but the thing that i run into whenever i place down that sofa we don't have a two-seater version of it we do have a two-seater version sofa from paranormal or like the paranormal stuff pack but we don't it doesn't really seem to fit in i don't think anyway and so whenever i use that sofa i always try and use other sofas from different packs and nine times out of ten i normally use the tiny living one but in that room i end up placing down the fireplace which is from cats and dogs i was debating for a while placing down a tv onto the fireplace and you would have seen i pulled one out of the catalogue 
thought, no, I'm not going to do that. And then I placed on a bookcase next to it, and then I thought, no, I do want a TV. So then I did add in a tiny little retro TV. The one that I used is from Eco Lifestyle, and it's one that you can find in the debug menu. When I was building this house, I did have a slight storyline idea for the Sims that could potentially live here. I was thinking that it was more so like a single parent who, like I said, is really into arts and crafts. Like, they love crocheting, they love knitting, they love pretty much anything that is creative and they can do with their hands, they are into. And so that's why they've got that little arts and crafts room but i was thinking on top of that they're going to be spending so much time painting knitting doing all these different bits and pieces they're probably not going to watch telly that much and so i thought well if i am going to add one in i'll add the one in from eco lifestyle because it looks like a really old retro tv i didn't really imagine this family to have like a, a flat screen plasma tv like they don't go out and get the newest tv as soon as it's released they're just more so they've got a tv maybe they'll watch like the news channel or maybe like the weather every once in a while but yeah also in that room i placed down a little shelving unit which was from eco lifestyle and then quickly you would have just seen me finish off the dining room so in the dining room i know it looks really small and it looks really squished in there but trust me i've play tested it and your sims can sit at every single seat now i did build this house with a single sim and their daughter in mind so i was more so thinking two sims would live in this house there is obviously potential for a third sim if you want maybe they're not to be a single mum you just maybe want like a small family of three living in this house you can definitely do that there is a lot of dining chairs i must admit around the dining room table but i was thinking well maybe what about if they want to have like the grandparents around or maybe they often throw like dinner parties or maybe they're also really into baking and so maybe they host all these different like baking events. Maybe them and their friends come round and they all do some baking together and then they all sit around the table and like taste all these different like brownies that they've made or something. I don't know, but the dining room table is so large of the amount of Sims that can actually fit in this house. But at least you've got options. Do you know what I mean? Like if you if you want your Sims friends to come around for a dinner party or something, the option is there. But in that room, that is where the buy folding doors. I think I said sliding doors at the start of this video, but I meant to say by the folding doors, that is where the by folding doors from the Desert Lux kit kind of go out onto, there ends up being like a little side table in there, also like a painting on the wall, there's also like a pile of books in the corner. But now as you can see I've now moved on into the next room which is the arts and crafts room. Now I want to say this is probably the most <laughs> creative office that I've ever done. Not creative in a sense of I've got this really good idea and I tried to execute this idea. It's more so creative in the fact of I tried to use all the different creative decorational pieces. So you know we've got the nifty knitting stuff back. I basically went to town with the build and buy. So I placed down the, the desk that is from that stuff pack as well as this other side table which can actually clip to the desk to make this one desk absolutely massive so that it's kind of like placed into the center of the room and I spent ages going around and cluttering it up with all these different like books and glasses and just individual like knitting manuals and knitting books and just like candles and just basically loads of different bits and pieces but then i also use the shelving unit which is from nifty knitting it's on the other side of the wall but it basically looks like it's got all these different kinds of ribbons and all these different like kind of wrapping papers and all the different artsy bits and pieces in there also place down a fireplace into that room now the reason why i place down a fireplace is on the exterior that is exactly where the chimney lies of course if you don't want there to be a fireplace in that room we can definitely delete it and then maybe place down maybe like the keyboard or something maybe you just want to make it into an absolutely massive activity room i mean your sims can already do crocheting in there knitting in there painting in there and then there is also a computer desk because technically it's just really an office with just a really massive desk and a fireplace but I tried to make it feel like the sim that lives in this house they're really into their arts and crafts I was thinking that they personally owned like a little Etsy business or something which in sims terms would be a proxy so maybe they knit all these different like beanies or socks or something or maybe they knit like stuffed animals and they sell them on on a little proxy their little Etsy website and that's maybe how they can afford to live like that is their day job if you get what i mean but now as you can see i've now moved on i've started furnishing the bedrooms now this is the bedroom for what i imagine to be the single mum of this household in here i was really struggling on what bed to use because i really wanted to use this bed which is the one that i ended up using from the high school years expansion pack because i really liked the dainty kind of like leaves and all the different small little drawings on the bedspread and i really wanted to use it purely for that reason but then the thing that i find whenever i come around to using certain beds I assign certain beds in my own head to certain life stages. So to me, I've only really used this bed for teenagers' rooms or like child's rooms. I've never used this bed before 
for like an, an adult's room or like a, a parent's room. And so to me, when I placed it down, I was like, oh, does this seem like a little bit too much of like a teenager's bedroom? But then I was like, oh, the only way that I'm going to get over this thought in my head is if I actually just use it for a parent's room. I did debate switching out the bed a few different times when I was doing this room, but then I did decide, you know what? I'm just gonna leave it in. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna try and make it work. And so I placed that down into that room. Also placed down at the little chest of drawers, which is from Cottage Living. Placed down like a little armchair, another little crocheting thing in the corner. Your Sims, honestly, they've got about three different locations in this house where they can go and find the little like crocheting box things for them to do crochet in. It's a really good decorational piece for just kind of like general cluttering up. But then also it offers gameplay as well. And so I placed them down onto the inside of the house. And then I'm also pretty sure on the outside where I placed down that little rocking chair that I was talking about, I think I placed one down next to that as well. But then also in that room, I placed down a little makeup vanity. So I imagine that the single mum maybe wakes up every single morning and does her makeup there and maybe then goes into the kitchen makes herself a cup of coffee or something but now as you can see i've now moved on to the upstairs portion of the build and i started off by doing the bathroom now i feel like i need to talk about the roofing situation because you're probably looking at this and thinking the roofing looks like an absolute massive pain when it comes to gameplay why have you built the house like this i want to rest assured when you're in gameplay you know when you're in cutaway mode the roof disappears so on the upstairs level even though you can really see the roofs and i had to pull it out to actually come in and decorate these rooms please be assured in gameplay the roof will still exactly be there but when you're in cutaway mode it disappears so it honestly doesn't really make a difference if this does really annoy you you can definitely change the way that i did the roofing and you can use you know them slanted pieces of the roof where it's kind of like just one side you could probably play about the roofing well i say probably you can actually play about the roofing because i did debate doing it myself where you basically have two sides and then on the third technical floor of the build you then could just put a small little triangular piece you could play around with the roof in that way if it really does bother you but yeah like i said when you're in cutaway mode which i feel like the majority of people play in you can't see the roof it just completely disappears it's still there but you know when the walls go half up half down in gameplay the roof is not going to annoy you you can still see what you're doing i rarely ever build houses like this but just because i was really trying to make this feel as much like the painting that i was talking about as i could possible i decided not to play around with the roofing pieces too much you know i said you can definitely do the two side pieces and then the top little triangular piece you can do it that way but i find that when i did it that way like the first time round it just looked a bit weird like it just the angle of the roof was just a little bit off to me and so if you want to do that in your own personal gameplay and you want to switch out the house switch out like the roofing pieces by all means do as you please but yeah i want to let you know don't worry in gameplay you can still see what you're doing i haven't just built rooms in a roof and you can't even navigate your way around but anyway as you would have seen i just quickly did the bathroom the bathroom also doubles up to be the little utility room space and now i've moved over and i've started furnishing at the the other bedroom the kids bedroom so in here i decided to use the bed which is from the seasons expansion pack honestly one of my favorite single beds or probably of all time that the sims team are ever going to release just because i love the little sheer curtains on each of the posts of the bed and the thing is as well they come in so many lovely swatches i more so ever seem to go towards the swatch that i've used in this room which is kind of like a white bread spread with these little like red curtains or sometimes i go towards the like, kind of like green bedspread because it's got these little flowers in the curtains honestly I think it's the most adorable little bed for a kid's room but in here i decided to use the chest of drawers which is from the cats and dogs expansion pack also placed down like a little doll's house a little drawing table also end up placing down like a little cat plushie in the corner because i did imagine this household to have a cat you might have noticed i placed down like cat bowls or cat bowls <laughs> cat beds and food bowls all around the house and so i was kind of hoping that you'd catch on that this house does have a cat but apart from that i'm going to go around and finish the room off and that is pretty much it so anyway guys i'm going to end this voiceover right here as always you can download this build via the gallery my gallery id is jessica pie yt or you can search for the hashtag jessica pie yt or just the hashtag jessica pie as always thank you guys so much for watching this video and as always if you do like my content then please do subscribe and hopefully i'll see you in my next sims 4 speedboarding video bye guys